My name is Ed Akira, and I'm the producer of a short film documentary, a film called Blacks Can't Swim. The aim of the film is to understand why a disproportionate amount of black people and ethnic minorities can't and don't swim. On my journey to find the truth, I have the pleasure of speaking with an English footballer defender. She has made 71 appearances for the English national team and was selected in the Great Britain squad for the 2012 London Olympics. She has played for English side Arsenal and for St. Louis Athletica, Chicago Red Stars, Washington Freedom and Sky Blue FC. She currently plays for Chelsea in the FA Women's Super League. Anita Asante, welcome to In The Deep End with Ed Akira. Can you swim? Um, not very confidently, no. Do you have a story? Yeah, I think uh, when I was younger, obviously I went with school to the swimming pool and learned that way. Um, and then I had a trip with my team um, when I was about 14 in LA. Uh, we went swimming. Yeah, a friend of mine jumped in, uh, unexpectedly landed on me. And I went down in the deep end and just kind of panicked a little bit. And from, from ever since that point, I've just really not been uh, confident to be in open water or deep water uh, and swim, pretty much. for like a bit of a trauma. <laughs> but you can swim to save your life. I believe I could, yeah. That's the most important thing. Um, does everybody in your family swim? No, my sister can and the rest of my family, my mum, my dad, my brother. Not, no, not really. Oh. <laughs> Although my mum is learning right now. Okay, that's great. She's retired now, so she's found something to do. <laughs> <laughs> One of those things was uh, learning how to swim. So. Okay, so so is there any particular reason that made her decide to learn how to swim? Yeah, I think she had decided that at this point in her life, when she gets to enjoy her free time, that she could go on holiday with uh, you know uh, relatives and friends, and when they go to the pool or the beach, that she would love to experience what everyone else experiences and feel confident in the water rather than be a you know bystander uh, just watching everyone else have fun so that was one of her main motivations i would say do you see a difference in attitudes in swimming between your black and ethnic minority friends and your white friends yeah well i mean uh, obviously i'm in a football team so and i'm one of the few uh, from an ethnic minority so yeah, I'm, you know, surrounded by obviously Caucasians and the majority of them can swim. So I guess already that's obviously one of the obvious uh, differences often is just that the majority of them can swim. And I, I, I personally believe it's a generational thing uh, as, as, as well as like obviously community differences and opportunity and uh, to use facilities that provide that. So often it's if your parents don't swim, then you're unlikely maybe to swim as well, unless you've had maybe very good training at school or had the opportunity to go and learn often, um, then that is one of the biggest differences, in my opinion. As, as, as a public figure, do you think the media have um, a responsibility towards the issue? Yeah, I think uh, the media in general have a responsibility in a lot of issues, especially where uh, the AME people are concerned to, you know, I guess emphasise the importance of swimming for everyone in our society. And our societies today are very diverse. So, it's, it, yeah, it's an important issue to try and encourage people to, to, to feel confident in that. Um, and as well, for communities to feel that there are people who look like them that might also be able to help them learn and, and give them the confidence to even step into that space. In that respect, yeah, I think it's important that the media obviously try and um, get information out there to support uh, people in their endeavour to learn and to motivate people and to project positive images and, and reasons why people should engage with swimming and also not create and perpetuate negative stereotypes about why ethnic minorities don't swim. Role models, because that's one of the things I've been talking about. You, you can't do what you can't see. The more, more people we see looking like us swimming, the more likely you know, decide to do it as well. And uh, right now, as we stand, there's only one black swimmer in Team GB, Alice Deering. I was kind of surprised, but then I shouldn't really have been surprised. Racism in sports, a very touchy subject. Have you 
experienced or observed any form of racism in your professional career? Um, not recently, not directly, but I've definitely been in situations where that has occurred, absolutely. Um, fortunately, never directly. Um, but yes, of course, when I've played in certain countries, you know, certain hostile, hostile crowds, that type of thing, then yes. That there's more people. I, don't, I think it's a, bit a case of, we know it's always existed. Um, maybe people are feeling more confident to speak up about it. I don't think that it's a, a thing that's ever gone away or probably that there's this sort of growth in the problem. I think it's there, it's been there, and now we're having more people in um, positions or using their platform to get this message out there. It's given other people from all levels of sport the confidence to speak up about the types of discrimination or racism that they also receive or that, or that they have felt that in the past they haven't felt confident enough to maybe speak up on. Cultural or physical? So that one, th one thing that was highlighted in, in, in a number of occasions is that black people have a very different muscle tone and that's why we struggle with swimming. That's why we're very good on land, but we can't, when it comes to swimming, we, 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 we can't float. The, the thing is, I've heard that my whole life. I've heard <clears throat> a similar thing. So, growing up that you know our muscle density and all this stuff that's why we can't but ultimately we just need to know if, is that a fact is it scientifically proven or not hey, i don't know there's no there's not proof anywhere and, and, and it's just one of those stereotypes and stigmas that we're trying to eradicate i hid behind that stereotype most of my life if somebody asked me can you swim i said of course i can't swim i'm black and it was a safety net for me to hide behind and there's a lot of people doing the same. I've only now decided to do that. I have to learn how to swim. I started learning how to swim at the beginning of the year, but there's a lot of people out there still believing it and living behind it. And you know, dispel the myths because everyone can swim. Blacks can swim. Whether it's swimming or any aspect in life, it's about breaking down stereotypes. Because once you break those down, that's when people can see that they can achieve certain certain objectives that they want to achieve. If this stereotype about muscle, you know, black people's muscles are too dense or can't swim, it turns into sort of this kind of old wives tale, <laughs> or myth, really just a myth, isn't it? When you can eradicate that and change the belief system that exists, then people suddenly get recognised that, you know what, that has no relevance to me. I have, I'm like every other human being and I have the opportunity to do that and learn how to do that. Um, it's the same way, you know, I saw something about American footballers and how, you know, you know, or, or I saw a discussion about sports people in general and that traditionally it's always been that, you know, black athletes, that's what they should do, sports, because they're not actually intellectual enough to do intellectual jobs. So when you start to break down those stereotypes, it's when you give the people the recognition that they can actually do whatever they want to do. The, the more you tell someone that you can't do that, the more they believe, the more you believe that you can't do it. It ultimately, so, yeah, it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yep. In a way, um, you know, that's what that's what colonialism is. That's what all these things are. It's in, an indoctrination of the mind. And you do that enough, and people hear it enough, it, it becomes not just one problem; it becomes a generational problem. Well, what used to be the elephant in the room, things that we didn't talk about, is now coming to the... We're going to be shouting it from the rooftops. To, in order to do, like you said, in order to do it, we have to believe that we can do it. And then once we can believe, we will do it. So what have you been up to? What's your plan for the future? Well, right now I'm injured, so I'm rehabbing. Um, and trying to get back to training and playing. Oh, so, sorry to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, Aside from that, I'm working on a lot of different projects right now for different charities. I'm still a, a representative ambassador for Amnesty International UK. I've just started working with um, another footballer in the men's game and his charity, Odds Around the Child, in a project in Ghana and in India. And 
yeah, sort of exploring different avenues of of either working altruistically through charity or connecting sports um, and you know developing and helping young young people. <laughs> That is very. That is very, very good. And, and like I said, we need we need role models like yourselves. Yeah. You know, so for what you do is it, it, amazing. The more people that can see what you're doing, it encourages them to do the same. So thank you very, very much. For doing what you do and keep on doing the great work. And thank you very, very, very much for taking the time to speak with us in the deep end of Edicura. And I hope your team wins today. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks,